So today we're looking at another one of the rare productive Rust rewrites. This is an application called Prox, which is a rewrite of the PS command. You know, that command that you never really remember how it actually works until you actually need to go and use it. So Prox tries to simplify the configuration process while also adding in some nice extra functionality. So there's two obvious differences between this and PS. So if we go and run the PS command, let's do PS-AUX and then look at Prox. So Prox actually colors the output and also when you run Prox, it automatically runs it in a pager for you. So this is actually running inside of less. So you can scroll up and down with J and K. You can scroll left and right with your arrow keys or you can scroll up and down with the arrow keys as well. And obviously being in less, you can also do searches. So let's say we search for something like library and that'll jump us all the way down to library. So by default, what it's going to show you is the PID of the application, and it's actually going to be sorted by the PID. So after that, we've got the user. So this is the user who actually launched up the application. Then you have the TTY the application was launched on, which in my case, everything is going to just show nothing in here. I believe it shows nothing when it's launched on the same TTY that you're currently on. Then you have the CPU percentage being used by the application, the memory percentage used by the application, the CPU time used by the application, and then the command actually used to launch it. But you don't just have to show this. There is way more that you can show as well. So let's go over to the config file and let's go down to prox. Now, if we actually rename the config file properly, and relaunch procs as we're going to see let's do it in this one here there are way more columns that we can actually show and this is by no means all of them this is just a handful of them that i felt like showing for this video so at least when you install this from the aur you don't actually get a man page so if you want to go see the documentation for this you're going to have to go over to the github page now over here it's going to show you every single column that can be added into prox and also how you would actually show that inside of PS as well if it actually is supported in that application. So for example, if you want to show the command, that is just args, but things like say context switch are not actually in PS or the name of the doc container or what else do we have? So things like red bytes, which is the red bytes from storage. This is actually a really useful table. And it also shows you what operating systems will actually support those options as well. So this application is available on Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. And obviously Windows has the least support, but everything is available on Linux, which is nice to see. So let's actually go and add something from this list. So let's say we want to add something like the, I don't know, user real. So the way we go and do this is inside of the config file, we're going to make a new section in here and it's going to be called columns. So columns with an S on the end, make sure the S is actually there. So what we need to do is set the kind and the kind is one of those names we saw in the list. So anything on this left hand side here. So what I say we're going to use the user real that one. So equals user real and let's set a style for it. So the style is the coloring of that column. So let's just set the style to red, I guess. And then we have whether you can do numeric search on it. So we're going to say that you can't do numeric search because it's going to be a string value. So numeric underscore search equals false. And then non-numeric search, that is an alpha search. So non-numeric equals true. And then we can set the alignment for it. So let's go and set the alignment to the right-hand side, for example. So if we go and relaunch this now, the first column we see is going to be the user real. So as we can see, it's showing my username for that one. So if we go back to the color for just a moment, this doesn't just have to be a color name. There are other values you can set as well. So this does support 256 color. If you do want to use one of those colors, basically what you do is inside of curly braces, do color 256 equals and then whatever color you want to use. So for example, let's do 223. And if we go and save this and bring this one back open now, as you're going to see, it's a tan color, I guess. And there are special values like by percentage, by state, and by unit, which basically base the color on whatever the value actually is set to. Now, a worry I can imagine a lot of people having with this, especially with all of the coloring, is can I actually get clean output? Because if you want to do something like sed, orc, grep, things like that, it's much harder to work with if you have a bunch of ANSI characters in there just basically cluttering stuff up. But nicely, if we actually go and pipe prox into another application, like say grep, and let's grep out, I don't know, library, 
it actually goes and gets rid of all the formatting. So it does still show, obviously, the uh, column separators, but none of the colors are actually there. And obviously, following that logic, if you go and save prox to a file, it also doesn't have any formatting in there as well. So let's go and, I don't know, open this up in Vim. As you can see, no formatting in there, which is really nice to see. So I've just been running prox with no arguments, but if we actually pass something into it, like let's say we pass library into it, what that's going to do is try to do a partial match with this text string. So anything that has library in any part of the line will be shown here. So as we're going to see, we have all of these lines right here. Now, some of it is cut off, but if we were to say, pipe that into a file, let's say library, we just call it library, I guess, and vim library. As we can see, we have the entire line here. Now, when you do a text search like that, it does behave a little bit differently to doing a number search. So when you do a number search, it has to be an exact match. And by default, it will only match on the PID. Now, anything that you set that numeric search to will also be matched against as well. So in this case, it's probably also going to match against the memory as well. So let's try searching for something like one. So that's just going to output the process that has the PID of one. And you can do more complex searches by doing the dash dash and dash dash or dash dash nand and dash dash nor options. So these are Boolean logic operators. So let's do something like prox dash dash and L Y. So anything that has L and Y in it will actually be matched on in this case. So if we go and run that, as we're going to see, we have all of these here. But if we instead run it with the OR operator, what we're going to see is we'll have things have L or Y or both. Because a logical OR is a bit different to an English OR. It's a little bit confusing the first time you run across it. So prox dash dash OR L Y. We now have all of these applications. So NAND is a negated AND and NOR is a negated OR. So anything that would be true in the OR case would be false in the NOR case. And I'll leave a link down below to some truth tables if you've never actually come across them before. So now that we're on the topic of options, we don't actually have that many to mess around with. So if we run prox with the dash dash tree argument, basically you're going to see the dependencies of all of the processes. So this will show you what processes are launching other processes and then launching those and so on and so forth. So it also has to go and reorder everything to make sure the tree is as simple as possible. We can go and mess with the sort order with the dash dash sort A for ascending and the dash dash sort D options for descending. And those take in the same arguments we saw before when we were actually adding in the new column. So if we go back to the GitHub, let's say we want to order by the, I don't know, what do we actually have in here? Let's go and have a look. So, oh, it's over here. Let's go and order by, say, for example, the usage CPU. So if we do dash dash sort A, and then pass in usage CPU. Now, as we're going to see, it's being sorted by this column right here. And we can go and sort it in the other order by doing sort D instead. So sort D. And as we're going to see, this right here has had the most CPU usage. So if we want to dynamically add in a new column, it's a bit more complex than just doing prox dash dash insert and then the name of the column we want to use. So in this case, usage CPU, what we need to do, we actually do need to run that argument. We need to go and do some setup over in the config file. So let's go and make a new column. And this column is going to be a placeholder column. So its kind needs to be set to slot. So slot is basically just going to be a placeholder that doesn't get shown unless you actually run the insert command. And let's actually set a style for it. So the style we're going to set, I don't know, let's just do yellow. The style doesn't actually matter. So if we go and run this now, as we're going to see, we have this CPU usage column sitting in our second spot. But if we go and say move this here, so let's go and move this down to just after this separator here. So as we're going to see now, now that column is going to be inserted in a completely different location. Now, up until this point, we've been running it like the PS command. So when you actually run the command, that's the output you get and nothing else after that. You can also run this in watch mode, which makes it work a bit more like the top command. So as the data actually changes, it goes and updates the output. So if we go and run prox dash dash watch, as we're going to see now, this is basically being updated as it actually changes. So if we go look on this side here, you can probably see the biggest changes. So obviously that's way too much information to actually see. So you probably also want to filter it down a bit. So let's just filter it down to library. And as we can see, that's just the information on the library processes. You can also mess around with the watch interval by doing the dash dash watch 
dash interval argument, and this takes in a number of seconds. So if we say set this to five seconds, it will update every five seconds rather than every single second. There are some extra configuration options I didn't go over before, but I don't really think most of them are that interesting. Most of them are just messing around with how the coloring works and things of that nature. There's really not much else for the actual productive use of the application. So my one issue with this application actually has to do with how it does everything from its config file. Now, I don't think that's a bad thing. I actually think this is a massive improvement and honestly, it makes it much easier, but it comes with one slight drawback and that is that a lot of the values that are set in the config file can't actually be overrode by options. And if you're gonna do everything from a config file, I do wanna have the ability to actually override it when I need to override it rather than having to modify the config every single time. Now it's only a slight issue, but it's an issue nonetheless. So I think this is actually a pretty useful application. And if you want a more colorful output of PS, hey, this is a pretty good choice, I would say. Now, I know this isn't the only application out there that does that, but this is sort of the first one I came across, and it seems like it does it in a pretty decent way. So, I don't know, I'd recommend it, I guess. So, I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So so a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Kulbinian, Andrew, Craig, Nathan, Montezar, Chico Bento, Joseph, Pitati, Road, Tony, Brennan, Donald, John, Marek, Mikel, Nate, Dog, Nephite, Tees, Poe, and Zilva. If you want to go on some more, I've worked on the links down below to my Libra Pay, Subscribe Star, Patreon, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And this channel is available on Library, Odyssey, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.